Do you fancy a change? With today's advances in gene editing approaches such as CRISPR, that could very soon be a reality. We could engineer ourselves better, stronger, healthier, free from disease. But could we in doing so also widen the gap between the haves and the have-nots? Either way, I'm here to ask, are we there yet? Hello? I wish I was a little bit taller, I wish I was a baller, I wish I had a girl who looked good, I would call I'm Dr. Ben Miles, I'm a PhD physicist turned CEO, I'm interested in how science can help impact society. Today I want to talk about CRISPR, a gene editing technique that could change humanity's relationship with disease and evolution. Let's start at the beginning. Before complex life developed on this planet, the earliest known organisms were prokaryotes. Microbiologically speaking, some of the simplest living things. They are single-celled organisms that typically don't even possess a true nucleus or even organelles. Prokaryotes can be divided into two groups, the much more commonly known bacteria and the perhaps less so known archaea. Bacteria and archaea with eukaryotes, which are us, more advanced kind of cellular organisms, overall form the three domains of cellular life. This is where our story into gene editing gets interesting. Prokaryotes have evolved their own rudimentary immune system that confers resistance to foreign genetic elements such as those present within bacteriophages. Bacteriophages are essentially viruses for bacteria. They replicate the same way a virus does by breaching a host cell, injecting their genetic material into it, and starting to convert the cell into a baby bacteriophage production machine. To protect themselves against these invaders, prokaryotes capture snippets of these past invading viruses' DNA, and they store them in segments of RNA called CRISPRs. This stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromatic Repeats. Nailed it. First discovered in 2013, CRISPRs act as a genetic memory bank or genetic library of previously encountered viruses. If the same virus attempts to invade the prokaryote at some point in the future, assisted by a particular protein called Cas9. This Cas9 protein acts as a kind of genetic investigator or genetic inquisitor. It performs an interrogation of all the genes that it reads through and compares them against the guide RNA. If this CRISPR-Cas9 conjugate determines that the DNA is foreign and that it is from a past virus, Cas9 is capable of cutting out that invading piece of DNA and discarding it. This is where everything gets exciting. The CRISPR-Cas9 system that exists in these bacteria not only can affect bacterial DNA and extract a piece of foreign DNA from it, but equally, it can be applied into other organisms, like human beings, to do exactly the same thing. Potentially, it would be capable of extracting damaged or disease encoding pieces of RNA out of our genome and removing them. This whole development of the technique that has shorthand become known as CRISPR uh, won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry and could be one of the most significant leaps forward in modern medicine. CRISPR has profound relevance for human health because it might help us deal with potential applications, preventative as well as therapeutic, dealing with diseases such as COVID, HIV, influenza, malaria, autoimmune diseases. However, obviously with all such great leaps forward, there is a potential dark side to all of this capability. There are two sorts of flavors that CRISPR gene editing comes in. The first one is somatic editing. It's essentially editing to the genome of a individual to specific tissues typically within that individual. These edits, importantly, cannot be inherited by a person's offspring. The second type of editing is called germline editing, and it refers to editing tissues that are derived from reproductive cells. This has the potential to make changes to every cell within the organism, and it has the potential to be inherited by future generations. The germline edit, in theory, could make changes to all future generations of a family tree, potentially in time, every member of a particular class, of a particular country, or even potentially the entire human race. And it may seem very straightforward in the case of things like malignancies, removing things that are bad out of our genetic code, but what about the positive genetic traits, athleticism, height, intelligence, hair color, eye color? Could all of these in theory be engineered pre-birth? And if so, is it moral to create these kind of designer babies? So far, the WHO, the World Health Organization, has recommended against any clinical research on human germline editing 
until we have resolved all of these technical and ethical considerations. However, as with all things, humanity is easily tempted and led astray. Whilst pushing the boundaries in 2019, a Chinese scientist was arrested and sentenced to prison following his claims that he has created the world's first gene-edited children using CRISPR. Now, you might initially jump to the conclusion that this was a purely bad actor trying to pervert the course of evolution, trying to improve intelligence or pick a particular genetic trait. But the lines are more blurred here. Uh, the scientist was trying to develop resistance to HIV in children where one of the child's parents was HIV positive. The point that we want to talk to further, however, regardless of how CRISPR should or should not be used, is are we there yet? There are three key challenges still in the way of ensuring that CRISPR works as safely as it can possibly work. First, and probably the greatest challenge facing scientists at the moment, is a matter of accuracy. Should this Cas9 protein interfere with DNA outside of the target DNA that it is designed to remove and extract, there is a significant risk of damaging healthy cells and even turning them potentially cancerous. In 2002, during a gene therapy trial using a different gene editing approach, not CRISPR, children with severe combined immune deficiency disorder, whilst the initial experimentation seemed that it would be successful, slowly over time, the children began to develop cancer-like symptoms, which slowly progressed in some of the children into leukemia. This ultimately, and rightfully so, halted that trial. Another major puzzle, another major challenge to be overcome is how do you actually deliver this CRISPR system into a patient's cells? Typically, the way of doing it is using a virus and reverse engineering it, forcing it to carry a CRISPR payload into the desired cell. This process is known as a viral vector and whilst it is an incredibly powerful technique, it also is yet to be perfected. When this does go wrong, two potential problems arise. Either the viral vector infects several different types of cells beyond the target tissue, say it was supposed to be infecting skin cells, maybe it potentially goes off and infects a whole bunch of different muscle tissue. What scientists are trying to do at the moment to limit this unintended consequence is to choose systems that are inherently, to some extent, self-contained. At the moment, some obvious target choices are things like the eye, which is largely a self-contained system. It doesn't interface with the rest of the body very easily. The other big concern associated with using a viral vector and potentially the more serious one is how does the human immune system actually respond when it detects this viral vector and the attached CRISPR payload? What, if any, potential is there for overblown immune responses to this injectable? Actually, a major step back that occurred in 1999 when another non-CRISPR based gene therapy approach suffered a big setback with the death of an 18 year old patient. The patient died after their immune system launched a massive attack against the virus that was holding the gene therapy. The real tragedy here was that the target morbidity, the target disease, was one that was ultimately not life-threatening. So are we there yet? Probably no. This technique still needs further development, though it remains one of the most exciting medical advances in modern medicine. As research continues to accelerate, CRISPR may one day mean the end of human disorder and disease. If you're interested in seeing other examples of science impacting the world, here's a video on how cosmic rays affect Super Mario speedrunners. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.